So it seems like once again we've got some sort of uh, changing of the seasons going on here. I'm not so sure who is going to uh, win out today, Old Man Winter or uh, Miss New Spring, but uh, we got a spring-like kind of day going on, yeah. Okay, try to get the slush off the old porch, all right? <laughs> we don't need we don't need any uh, we don't need any lawyers. No, thanks, pal. Anyway, welcome uh, to season five, episode trois, three. That's as, that's about as much French as I know. Trois. It's that's it. Season five, episode three of Niagara Four One One Live with Lee Sterry. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars, supported by Virgin Insurance Group, Ace Alignment, and our newest sponsor, uh, Equal Wellness. Uh, and we are powered by WeStream, uh, Canada's premier uh, streaming service. Just getting the uh, old technological uh, thing in place again here. And we are housed, as per usual, ladies and gentlemen, in the lovely Fiddler's Poorhouse, 149 St. Paul Street in downtown St. Catherine's. Now, um, today started out with a very bizarre story, and frankly, we're still trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, there was a, a, a school bus that I'm hesitating because we're not really sure what happened. It kind of had an accident. It uh, kind of lost a wheel. It kind of hit a guardrail. And I'm saying kind of because we're really not sure exactly what happened. Um, finally, uh, there were no kids hurt. That's a good thing. But initially, there were children on the bus. And it's, uh, it happened in Welland, Prince Charles Drive area in, uh, in the Rose City this morning and uh, we're going to try to dig a little deeper on this and try to find out uh, or bring you as much up to date as we possibly can about what happened to that so that's going to be off the top of the program uh, also um, one of niagara's uh, stars uh, in the world of mixed martial arts she's been with us numerous times and we promised that we would keep you up to date and we would follow her career and man has she had an exciting week jasmine jazzita vicious is uh, gonna be with us she had a, a landmark fight this past saturday for the ufc and uh, man <laughs> what a great story her star continues to rise so we're going to be talking to her uh, we have uh, believe it or not a band that formed over 30 years ago and still going. Pioneers in the punk band business. We're going to have, uh, have them on today at about 12.20. And uh, perhaps uh, if, we can, uh, if we can track them down, Dave McMahon, Dogman Dave, uh, one of Niagara's, if not Niagara's, premier dog trainer, uh, we're going to have him on to talk about a story we did last week. So a bunch of stuff happening today, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Season five, time do fly when you be having fun. Season five, episode three, here on this January the 24th, 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, on the right-hand side of your screen in that little, in that little uh, rectangular box is Kevin Jack. Hey, Kev, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Lee. Doing all right. Ready to dive into the program today because, yeah. as you mentioned, so much stuff. And we that have was a lot. A wild ride in Welland this morning. I mean, <laughs> this, let's just get right to it. This, this wild nuts. bus ride. Uh, and like I said off the top, we're still trying to sort out exactly what happened and why it happened. Well, there's one of the shots of the bus. Obviously, there's a good uh, deal of uh, front cab crunch there in that, in that post. Now, trying to track this story, this bus driver that had, look at that, that rip in the floor area there too. Now you see, this is something we did a while ago and I learned something really, really good this year. Those three black lines on any school bus, on the side there, the three black layers, um, they're significant for something. The bottom black line is the floor of the bus. When you're on the bus, that's where your feet are when you're sitting 
when you're sitting in the seat, that's where the feet are. Then the, the black bar above that, you see where the stop sign is? The black bar in the middle is where the seats of the chairs, the seats of the seats are. So, and then the top bar is where the, uh, where the top of the seats are. So that you know if there's children in a school bus, you know where they're sitting, you know where their torso is, you know where their head is, you know where their feet are. And that's, that's by design. All school buses are designed that way. And you'll see there's quite a good rip there along the floorboards at the front, just behind the cab of that, of that school bus. Now, there are no kids on it, no children on it uh, right then. And again, there was no one hurt in this incident today. But Kevin, the nearest we can tell is that this school bus driver had an altercation of some sort with a truck, uh, a pickup truck, like a, a club cab truck. And there was a fair bit of damage done to the, to the truck as well. Yeah, the truck is total. Here, I'll pull up the truck for you. I mean, this is nuts. It just, it just, it defies the imagination as to what exactly happened and why. So there is the truck. This is, this must have been a fairly high impact collision. I mean, I'm stating the obvious, looking at those pictures, airbags deployed. Uh, both the front and back rear doors and rear quarter panel, right up to just about where the engine compartment is. Damage. See that one wheel there at an odd angle, so you can tell that that's just not where it's supposed to be. So this thing was hit pretty. It looked like a. That looks like a T-bone, Kevin. I mean, it, it looks like somebody went through an intersection that shouldn't have gone through the intersection. Whether it's the bus, whether it's the truck, or whatever the hell it was, um, the bus hit the truck, right? Yeah. I don't know. Trying to piece together this story through the comments is, we think. is bizarre. So I mean, let's, it is bizarre. We're let's start to, at the top here. We're trying to we're trying to track this thing. But then the bus went on, apparently, after this, and people are saying, "I saw this. I saw this bus." Okay, here's a, here's a comment. I followed this bus from Broadway and Prince Charles, doing at least sixty to seventy kilometers. That's not that slow. I mean, it's it's fairly common city speed to Thorold Road while on the phone with police. It was driving on the rim of the front driver's side with heavy body damage. The bus had dark tinted windows so could not see in. Is that normal for a bus to have dark tinted windows? I don't know. Uh, the police finally got him to pull over with the assistance of another vehicle that came to a complete stop in front of him. Then he was blocked in by the cruisers. It was an older gentleman driving. Okay. Uh, did you see it hit anything? Someone else said it was involved in hit and run. I stopped to assist the man, said he hit the guard. Okay, now here's, now here's another thing. Not just the truck. He said he hit the guardrail back on the canal road and he just wanted to get the kids to school. And again, he was an older gentleman. All right, so there were children on his bus when he had some sort of collision. Was it a guardrail or was it the truck? Okay, now here's one. Uh, uh, Chevalier MC says, Michael Pierce, yes, the bus hit my sister-in-law and took off. Her truck is totaled. Well, we saw pictures of the truck. She was just released from the hospital. She is very shook up, but she is okay. Thank, thank goodness that, you know, and no wonder you'd be shaken up after that kind of a collision on the driver's side of your vehicle, especially. Right, so what happened here? Did it, did it hit a guardrail? Did he hit a guardrail and then hit the truck? Did he hit the truck and hit a guardrail? Did he hit a truck and thought he hit a guardrail? But we, is we, the man, is the man, uh, suffering some sort of episode that uh, is making him make bad decisions. He shouldn't, sh he said, I, I needed to get the kids to school. I mean, he had, he had tunnel vision about everything that was going on apparently, whatever it was that was going on, be it guardrail, be it truck, be it whatever. He had one thing in mind. He had like, you got one job, get the kids to school. That seems to be where he was, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm, I'm supposing here. 
If I'm wrong, my bad. But it's that seemed to be what he wanted to do. Irrespective of everything, come hell or high water, if the bridge don't rise, he's getting those kids to school. All right, her truck was two months old, brand new, and now totaled. She tried to miss the bus as it was coming into her lane, but it sandwiched her against the guardrail. All right, so now there's where the guardrail and the truck and the bus stories, pardon the pun, collide. We've got a bus, we have a truck that was apparently sandwiched between the bus and a guardrail, and the bus continues on its way. That's, wouldn't one call that a hit and run, Kevin? Trying to piece this thing together. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but it's like, glad you're okay, sorry about the truck. Uh, but, says Kevin, we're going live uh, at noon, Niagara Forum 1-1 Live, which is what we're doing right now. So anybody that can, uh, Veronica, if you got that text and you can click on the link, please come and talk to us on the show. Because we need to try to understand what happened. Yeah. Some, something tells me that our, um, our hearts uh, seem need to go out to the older gentleman that was the driver of this bus. I have a feeling that there's some sort of shock uh, syndrome going on here because that, uh, that is just not, that's not the normal reaction of somebody that is in, a, is in an accident, especially if you're in, uh, if there are children in your care. Uh, and we all know that people of, of uh, more advanced years sometimes react differently uh, to shock and trauma and stress, et cetera. And um, that, seems, that, that seems to be something that happened here because this is, this is not normal activity. I think I know that guy. You know that guy? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Fire Marshal Myers of the Welland Fire Department. Well, that would make sense. I might see him tomorrow morning. You play hockey against this man probably or yeah, with I him. I think so. I think that's one of the Welland firefighters <laughs> that I suit up against. So maybe I'll get more of the story. But yeah. here, um, Laura, you know, asked the question and other people saw it as well. I wonder if it's the school bus I seen driving. I saw. I seen. <laughs> sorry, people. There's no such thing as I seen. I apologize, Lori, for centering you out, but you didn't see anything. You saw something. I wonder if it's the school bus I saw driving without a front wheel on Prince Charles an hour ago. Well, there probably wouldn't be two buses like that doing that, so I'm assuming it was. <laughs> the bus was literally riding on the hub and bus frame. And then um, Colleen follows up saying, yeah, my husband and son witnessed it being followed down Prince Charles before being stopped on Thorough Road. Yeah. Like, this, is, this is crazy. So did, he, did the bus driver hit a guardrail or did he... Hit a truck say, and hit, throw the truck into, into the, the guardrail. Because that's kind of what the truck damage looks well, like. Well, to me, it looks like a side swipe. Well, the earlier comment said that her, her sister's uh, truck, or his sister's truck, was sandwiched between the bus and the guardrail which has got to be traumatic as hell. But and did, I guess the kids got to school. <laughs> that's kind of consistent with this damage. When you said T-bone, I was thinking more side swipe. Yeah. Because but see, th the, the panels aren't pushed in, right? Yeah, but that's, well, what panels are left. No, but I mean, and the damage is, is wider to me than if you just got hit by a vehicle. It'd be it, very like, focused. It, it, yeah. It, right? Where this looks like the damage goes all the way from the front it's like they panel. drove. It's like they drove along together touching uh, or smashed into one another for a while So does this before, bus they driver, dis before they disengaged. Does this bus driver think that he only hit a guardrail when in actuality he, he well, sandwiched a... We're not really sure. Well, this is, the, this is what I'm wondering. Uh, this is the... I did my... Uh, what a wild my, ride. My heart just goes out to everybody involved, including the bus driver, because there's something, there's something wrong. Was this a medical issue? I, uh, it may have been either a mental or a physical medical issue, but he made a comment at some point in time. He was just trying to get the kids to school. And it's not, I mean, it's nice to be focused on your job, but that's not usually what, how you would react in a situation like that. So there has to be something different there. 
Gosh, yeah. but driving that far on a rim? Like, yeah. have you ever driven on a rim? I've driven on a rim. Oh, yes. You know you're driving on a rim, and if you don't... <laughs> Absolutely. But like you said, he might have been focused. People deal with trauma and you only ways. And you only do it for as long as you need to do it to get your vehicle off the road. You don't do it with a destination in mind. Yeah, this bus was involved in a hit-and-run accident earlier on Canal Bank in Welland. So there you go. Yeah. So uh, the bus had some sort of an incident with the truck... Go. Bailey's daughter was on the bus, Lee, and I think a lot of us are wondering, what about the kids? All right, so there you go. Bailey Marie says, my daughter was on this bus. Kids are seemingly okay, but pretty shaken. Lots of unanswered questions. I'll say, it'll be, it would be interesting to talk to the children and say, kids, what did you see? The driver needs to learn that the wheels on the bus go <laughs> round and round. <laughs> the stop would have fell off. Okay. okay, it's not a funny situation, but there's one in every crowd, I guess. Other. Probably stolen? I don't think I so. I don't know. I mean, no way. people just no. wildly. No. Baseless accusations. Yeah. Here you go. Your pick, your driver's Switzer Cardi is the brand on the side of the bus. Oh, that, that, would, be, that would be the owners of the bus right. line. Boy, oh boy. What a wild ride in Welland. I, mean, I, I would imagine. I, I would imagine that um, Switzer Carvey would have some sort of a statement once they figure out what the hell is going on, because they're the ones that employ these people yeah. to drive their buses. I'll sort by the newest. That'll get the newest comments. Newest here. comments. All right. All right. It's all buried in there. Forty minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. So nobody's really saying much more about it. I don't think we know much more about it. Twenty minutes ago. Eighteen. Obviously, minutes ago. it'll be un, you know to. To coin a phrase that we hear all too often, this uh, incident is under investigation. Please call police if you've seen anything. Well, apparently, a lot of people saw quite a number of things going on here. But imagine seeing that, a bus full of kids, and it's on a rim. And it's pretty banged up, like sparking it's, already, its way down. It's, yeah, it's already banged up. <laughs> wow. And, the, I mean, that truck's a write-off. That's not getting fixed. Just two months old. We all know what it's like to have a brand new vehicle, right? You're you're happy for what a year? I mean, for a year at least. You're saying you I don't gotta... even want to scratch on it for two months, <laughs> let alone that. Oh god. Oh gosh, that's unbelievable. All but right, not well... the but not the only uh, road uh, related incident that we're talking about this morning. We have a few things that are related that we're going to kind of lump into this initial story that we're covering here today uh, uh, kind of a do you call it a road rage or a parked rage or or whatever it is the uh, Fairview Mall in St. Catharines this uh, post comes from Catherine hey everyone reaching out today to see if anyone possibly saw something suspicious so here first I'll just show you the pictures I mean yeah there's her flat tire. And There's a flat tire. Okay, we've all seen flat tires. However, we haven't all necessarily experienced flat tires with a slash in it like that. This doesn't happen by picking up a thumbtack or a nail uh, on the side of the road. So we're back to Saturday, January 20th. Zares, uh, Fairview Mall, uh, from quarter to four to 4.30 in the afternoon, somewhere in that window. Someone slashed two of my husband's tires. Okay, now if you're gonna have an accident with one, chances are it's not gonna be an accident with two, so yeah. Somebody slashed two of my husband's tires. Uh, a white Hyundai uh, uh, Tuscan, or was that? Uh, Tucson. Tucson is what that should be, yeah. We are parked in front of Zares beside the handicapped spot, not an expectant person spot. See, preemptively getting out in front. Hey, hey, yeah. hey. We Don't were parked me. okay. Yeah, we were in an okay place. Yeah. We suspect it was a male. White had a ball cap on, was driving a white van, Dodge, or caravan, or something else. The reason we suspect this was as we were coming off the highway from Costco on a YMCA drive, this individual was tailgating us, zoomed around us, stopped at a three way stop by Home Depot, did not move for more than 30 seconds intentionally. Uh, my husband who was driving obviously honked a few times during this interaction or altercation. We both came up beside Zares. We turned right to go park into Zares and the white van 
uh, co times pat, whatever that is. Um, the LCBO uh, then circled back to find us and flipped us off. So give him the bird uh, while we were walking towards theirs. He then tucked beside the LCBO in that little parking lot beside the store. Okay, got it. Uh, down where the sub place is. We have contacted Zares. They checked their cameras. Nothing could be seen. No cameras pointed that way. I'm at Fairview now, hoping to talk to the security people here. And I've also called the non-emergency line for the NRPS. Unless we can find video of this happening, this person will get away with it. Update. Fairview Mall Security doesn't have any cameras at the location where our car was. LCBO also has no cameras. That kind of surprises me. Next step is to call the property manager of First Capital. We also asked our neighbors and their cameras didn't pick up anything from the time we got home at about five o'clock uh, in the afternoon until Sunday morning. So if you were at the Fairview Mall and thought you saw something off or suspicious, if you can PM me or comment below, that would be so helpful. Thanks again. Um, and that is on Niagara 411. If you can help out, by all means, let them know. Kevin, um, we've all been frustrated behind the wheel of a vehicle. And I'm sure that behind, while behind the wheel of a vehicle, we have frustrated other people by our actions, be they intentional or otherwise. What is not within my realm of comprehension is that someone reacts with that kind of unbridled anger over something as simple as a misunderstanding by, while behind the wheel of a car. I, I don't, I really don't understand the reaction that, that some people I mean, Yeah, this have. is, this is crazy. Why? Somebody was taking too long or you thought somebody cut you off? So. Like, so what? It happens all the time. We've all made mistakes when we're driving a car. Now, Lee, you were saying that somebody close to you had something um, oh, well, pretty this, severe. Well, this was very serious. Um, uh, so I don't know if you wanted to share this story. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's all right. Uh, it's it's important, I guess, in its own way. Uh, my son and his wife and family live in uh, in British Columbia. She has my my daughter-in-law has a close friend, and her husband and family that live in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. Well, this family was out. The Edmonton and Alberta family were out on on the road. There was some sort of road rage or road traffic disagreement or whatever between these two people, uh, two family. And of course, and it's, it's a man thing, it's a testosterone thing, it's a, uh, uh, you know, kind of deal. And um, so the husband of uh, m my daughter-in-law's friend gets out of the vehicle to approach, the, both of these vehicles had stopped. Gets out of the vehicle, is walking toward the other vehicle, and the, you can tell, probably just by the story that I'm telling, that nothing good is gonna come of it. Well, the fellow in the car in the front backs up at a great rate of speed, runs over this guy and kills him, dead. He's gone. Family's lost a dad and a father, and in, in one moment of insanity, because somebody did something on the road because of a whatever reason. Dead. Killed him. Now, it was probably, uh, the, the altercation wasn't all one-sided. Both, I'm sure both parties, including the fellow that is now deceased, um, thoughts and wishes of the family. Um, played a role in this situation. And nobody entirely blameless, but for it to end in a death. People, this is, this is how these road rage incidents can get out of hand. In this case, it's a slash tire. Okay, you got a couple of slash tires, and that's not fun. I get it, believe me, I feel for you, and it should never happen, and I can understand you're pissed, and you want some you want some compensation and you want somebody charged you want you want some you want to avenge this somehow got it but but, but be careful how you react to something that may be completely out of proportion from what actually happened like, wow 
Anyway, that was, and then, then we have. Uh, yeah, we got uh, we got Paulo here from uh, from Putty. But you wanted to talk about the uh, the car that went through into Seaway Mall. Yeah, into the heart store. So we'll get we'll get to that later. We'll get on to that the later. Show, that was the third one. I mean, you I talk know. about this this bus driving on a rim, yeah. and then we got road rage up at Fairview Mall, and boy oh boy, they're all connected. But um, so there's this there's there's a band that that now it sort of hails from three fairly uh, disparate communities within. Uh, within Canada, Ontario and Quebec. Niagara Falls, Timmins, Montreal, uh, a con, uh, uh, sort of a, a mix of, of those cultures. But the thing about this band, the band is called Putty. Pioneers of the uh, punk genre, if you will. And they formed in 1993. We're talking like 30 years ago. Which is amazing, and the fact that, that they're still performing <laughs> is even more amazing. They just played a, at Camp Cataract uh, in Niagara Falls, just played a club in, in Welland not long ago. And with us is Paolo, uh, hopefully I'm uh, pronouncing the name right, Paolo of uh, Putty. Did I get it right, Paolo? Yeah, you got it. I got it? I okay. Did. Okay, so uh, are you the leader of this band? What role, do, or are you just one that could get up early? Um. Yeah, leader, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably a stretch. Uh, it's like herding cats these days, but yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, I get it. But, and, and so what what role do you play in the band? You, uh, I, I Vocals and guitar. Are you one of the founding members? I am. Over in 1993, what were you, four years old? I was uh, 16, 17, 16. Wow. All right, so... Tell us about the formation of this of this band. You can't you can't run across too many long-standing punk influenced bands in 2024, can you? I mean, you you're part of a pretty select group. Sorry, I uh, I missed a little bit of that. It, it I'm just saying I'm bit. just saying a 30 year uh, run that's still going for a punk genre band. Uh, yeah, a well, big deal. It, it's been it's been on and off. Uh, so we we played pretty consistently from 1993 up until about 2013, 2014, and then we kind of hung it up. We had a a major label deal for a few years that sort of went nowhere, and uh, we got dropped um, as a result of some mergers that had happened around that time. Yeah, right. And then uh, you know it was kind of a slow decline from there, and then and then we decided to sort of hang it up. So the bruises of hell uh, have healed mostly. <laughs> Okay. At this point, so in uh, 2019, we started uh, we started talking again, and we're like, well, maybe we should spin it up again. It's been uh, been a while, and um, yeah, why why not? And uh, so everybody was sort of on board. Um, okay. It all came about with uh, somebody bootlegged one of our records on YouTube, and it got quite a few streams and a lot of nice comments. There wasn't anyone really, uh, you know, slamming the band on there, which is unusual for YouTube, but. Uh, <laughs> We, we yeah. saw that, and that kind of yeah. That one thing led to another, and we just started recording again. I had been demoing the whole time, so there was a lot of material to sort of sift through, a lot of crap. <laughs> but uh, eventually, we we came up with uh, a bunch of songs that we can call an album. And then the pandemic happened, and so there were delays. But yeah, we're we're kind of, uh, you know, we've got it sort of up and running now. All right, so. Um... The genesis. What were you doing in the in the meantime? I mean, you guys must have had day jobs, doing something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, JV is a mechanic in the mine up in Timmins. Okay. Uh, Eric is a personality of sorts on TV. He was a VJ on Music Plus, and then now he does like a movie and uh, uh, movie and music reviews for Global and stuff like that. In Montreal. Eric, Eric, who is that? Uh, uh, Cohen. Okay. He's uh, he's our drummer. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, uh, I own a small post-production and animation company. I've been doing that for about 10 years. We do mainly ads, a lot of PetSmart commercials, uh, stuff like that. So, Interesting. That's great, that, that's great stuff. Obviously, you've, uh, you're either calling from your home studio or a studio studio because I see you've got the, um, you got the axes hanging up on the wall. Yeah, yeah this is uh, my work slash audio studio, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> now... Candy. Um, so, you're performing now on a, and, and you're from here? I'm from Timmins originally, you're but I live in St. David's, right? I'm calling you from St. David's. I've lived here for eight years. 
All right. Well, uh, shout out to St. David's. So, and you're performing now on a pretty regular, on a pretty regular basis, right? You, you like you're you're uh, going main mainstream uh, full bore on this. Uh, maybe not full bore. <laughs> the uh, yeah, there there won't be any extensive touring in the in the immediate future. We <laughs> okay. we did uh, we did Niagara Falls on Friday. We did the Bovine uh, in Toronto on Saturday. That was a really good show. It was kind of our home base for for many years. Uh, and now uh, we we've, we've got a show book for Timmins in uh, uh, April. Yeah. So we're kind of concentrating on just three markets, and it's uh, Timmins, Toronto, and Montreal, which is handy because one of us won't have to travel for each of those, <laughs> each of those cities. So, so where did the name uh, where did the name Puddy come from all those years ago? Yeah, it was uh, it was a uh, we were rehearsing in a really tiny room in someone's basement, so someone went out and got uh, some earplugs, and it was called Ear Putty <laughs> and, from Shoppers Drug Mart. And it ear kind Putty. Of okay, got it. Thing. It was like it stuck in your ears and you couldn't get it out. And then someone was like, let's name the band after that. So, <laughs> and we just never changed it. We just, it was a, we had, we, you know, we, we definitely were uh, motivated to change it at several points in the career. But he, uh, the further we went, the, the more of a, an undertaking it was. So we just. Uh, now, I'm, I mentioned, I mentioned the, uh, the, the punk genre. That word kind of means different things to different people. Is that how you would uh, I, summarize where you guys fit? What do you call what you do? Hard rock. It's pretty. It's it's like mid tempo stuff. We don't really. I mean, punk sort of. Uh, yeah, it's such a broad term now. It's like yeah, a it's, yeah, we don't even know what that means anymore. No, it's. Uh, I, I would just. Yeah, probably hard rock would be a more, uh, more okay. accurate description of, of what we're doing it's all mid-tempo kind of stuff it's heavy it's hard rock like, okay uh but it doesn't 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 slide too far or does it anywhere into that into the metal genre a little bit yeah i think yeah there's definitely like black sabbath influence for sure like maybe 70s metal uh not uh not really the more modern stuff it's a little more extreme we're more melodic i think uh most of the time <laughs> Well, Sabbath is yeah. Sabbath isn't a bad band to pattern yourself after. They uh, they did pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these days, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Ozzy's well, in rough shape yeah. These days, but, well, yeah. well, yeah. Ozzy's uh, well, Ozzy's been around a while and uh, lived yeah. a fairly fairly interesting life. So uh, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to pattern yourself too far after Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think I have that kind of stamina. But, uh, <laughs> no, I don't know how he's him and him and Keith. I don't know how they both survived, but um, embalmed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, where do we find you in your concerts or, or around? Where do how do we how do we find out where to come see you? Because I th I think it's really cool that uh, we've got we've got people of your uh, generation, if you will, that are. St are still out there doing it. Uh, it's awesome. Thanks, Lee. Uh, yeah, you can find us at putty.tv, and uh, we're on, like, all the social platforms and stuff, too. So if you just uh, you usually have, because the name is a little a bit of a, right. a bit of a weird one, you'd have to uh, search for Putty Band. Usually that'll bring us up somewhere on the, on the list of results. But, uh, yeah, putty.tv is sort of our main sort of hub. Now, do you um, have... And, and you have a selection of uh, albums or tunes or whatever uh, I'm assuming that we can access as well from various like Spotify's or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. On all the we're on all the streaming services, and okay. uh, we just launched a new video with the new single on January 5th. The video's on YouTube, uh, and again, you can link to that uh, through the website. It's and what? And, and which video is that? Uh, that's for what do you want, and that's uh, that's for the first single for the new record, which is uh, called Demagogo, and that's coming out uh, probably spring. We've got three singles, so there's uh, there's a couple more to go. Uh, that's right. the first. Okay, Paolo, I don't know if you're aware of this, um, but on on this program, we uh, do something at the end every week, uh, which uh, we call uh, play us off the stage, and we have a Niagara connected musical act of some sort and their video as the very last act of our program. And um, that plays us off the stage. And uh, today it's gonna be, today it's gonna be you in that uh, video, What Do You Want? So we're gonna be highlighting that at the end of the show. So that's, uh, just wanted to let you know that. Oh, awesome, thank you. 
You're welcome. Uh, Lee, I just want to pop in here and just get to change directions because I'm always interested in, um, in people in Niagara doing really cool creative things. And you mentioned when you're not on stage with Putty that you've crafted this business for yourself. You mentioned a post-production and an animation studio. How does a guy living in St. David's, growing up in, or sorry, from Timmins, you know, settling in St. David's, how do you become an animator? How did, how did that happen? I, I find that interesting. Uh, I, went, yeah. I went to uh, school at Sheridan. I'm going to say Sheridan, 19, yeah. Yeah, 95 to 2000. And then uh, out of there it was uh, several uh, careers. I, I was, uh, it was full-time music for a while. Then we got dropped, and I ended up working in the uh, post-production, like, but print for print in the basement of Sony, they felt bad for me because I didn't have a job. <laughs> so I learned a lot of, a lot of uh, skills there because it was night shift and there was very little to do for quite some time. So, uh, and coming out of that, I ended up uh, getting work as an illustrator, which is what I went to school for. Uh, an illustrator and doing some video stuff for a couple of ad agencies in Toronto. And uh, it, it just kind of grew from there. I worked at a couple of major ones like YNR, you hear them mentioned all the mm -hmm. time, Matt and uh, uh, other uh, ad-related shows. Uh, but I worked uh, for quite a while in that industry, and then, yeah, through those contacts, I was able to uh, spin up a little a little shop, and we've done we've done pretty well. We're still here. It's like 10 years, so. Well, yeah, good for great. you. Good Thank for you. you. And uh, there's a, there are a lot of those businesses that have been offshoots of people that have come through the sort of path that that you and your your bandmates have and it's it's great the fact that you can still do what you like to do and what is also really cool is the fact that you're you're working in something that you went to school for which is a lot of people can't say that so that's awesome yeah there's been a i mean hasn't been a very direct uh, career path but definitely always in the same uh, in that same sort of yeah you know, well Nothing, same world. nothing is ever that linear. There has to be the odd uh, <laughs> twist and turn uh, along the way. Well, I just want to send kudos because it's, it's not a linear path, but you're a creative person. And it's yeah. cool that you have all these different outlets. And some of your creativity bleeds out through your instruments. Um, and some of it bleeds onto the screen. And I think I, I just think that's really cool. And it, it gives hope to other people in Niagara that are yes. looking at this and don't really fall into a STEM path, per se. And they're wondering what 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 is my path going to be? And I think they could look at somebody like you and say that that's pretty cool. I and can we make can a talk. Living. And we can talk about a lot of the uh, the negatives of modern technology and social media and and all of those things. But the fact that uh, those of us that are in that sort of world, uh, you can do you can do that from anywhere, including St. David's, which sends a great Absolutely. message to people. You know, we're actually hiring right now. So uh, if uh, there's any post-production or animation artists out there in the area, uh, feel free to send me a message. We have well, a if you need any voiceover work for any of your uh, any of your work, so there's this guy right here. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Paolo. Paolo. What's, what's the name of your animation studio? Paolo, we, we just left that out. Sure. It's uh, badpixel.ca. So B-A-D-P-I-X-E-L dot C-A. Awesome. And, uh, we actually did the video that you'll be, you'll be playing out. So All right, yeah, so and we're going to do that. We're going to play uh, Putty's video, What Do You Want, um, at the end of the program, as I said, to play us off the stage. Say hi to your band members uh, and, and everybody, and uh, congratulations on a, on a hell of a run. Keep it going, and keep us posted, and come back and talk to us sometime. Absolutely. Thanks, Lee. All right, man. Take care. Uh, yeah, you too. Cool story, Kevin. That's a neat story. And we just had to flash this up. Before I talk about our very, very loyal sponsors who we've been neglecting so far in the show, and I'm sorry about that, I had to put this up one, uh, this up, uh, up today. This is your cuteness overload pick of the week. Now, doesn't that look like a, a stuffy that would be sitting on your six-year-old's bed? That is a real living, breathing dog right there is that like if you don't if you don't, if you see anything cuter than that this week i defy you to tell me what it is there's no there's what's, nothing cuter what's the breed on this Any that's a palm it's a miniature palm pomeranian as far as i know i think that's what it said in the uh in the description yeah oh man that thing's 
and he needs a he he's a little he's a little gun shy so he needs a quiet home to be in doesn't like you don't want to put him around other dogs and cats and stuff but anyway (laughs) i had to show that to you he's at the humane society gail's gas bars limited thank you very much for being our premier sponsor here on the program locally owned and operated for three generations Gail's here to help you with all of your petroleum needs, and this is a very, very busy time of year uh, for those of you that need their services. Uh, they've got uh, 11 service stations, full as well as self serve four convenience stores, wholesale fuel delivery, home heating delivery, oil lubricant delivery, one-stop call for uh, all of your petroleum needs and they just recently won an award from the convenience store operators association um for for their service in that in that part of what it is they do so uh thank you to jessica friesen and her entire staff and everybody at gales gas bars limited for supporting this program verge insurance uh another born and bred niagara company which are those that we like to support here whether you're home auto uh business whatever Verge Insurance Group can help get you the coverage and the rates, et cetera, that you are looking for. Ace Alignment, also uh, one of our, uh, they came on board with us in uh, season four, and um, Glory B, they're hanging in there with us in season five. Janice Ool Pretty is the owner operator of Ace Alignment, been in her family for a long, long time, uh, this business. The two dudes that run the place and uh, are excellent at what they do, Darren Miller, Matt Crompton, go in and say hi to those guys. Specializing in wheel alignments and brakes and suspension. You can get your um, MCO motor vehicle inspection done there. And uh, for all India and all of your automotive needs, by all means, stop by and see them. They're on North Street in St. Catharines, just behind uh, the new police station. That's on uh, Welland and Geneva there. They're right around behind there, a little street called North Street. That's where you'll find Ace alignment and our brand new sponsor is equal wellness services and the the genesis of of equal thank you this is their second week with us they didn't boot us out after a week so that's a that's a good sign um it's it started with uh, audrey wall and it's still her business she still runs it and she's expanded into a, a much wider uh wellness services uh, uh, string of uh, of well services, but it started out with with foot care, and that's how I got to know Audrey. Uh, they're experienced nurses of postgraduate education in foot care, and can help with uh, anything and everything to do with your feet. Be uh, a, a lot of people have, and I I had this too, a, like a toenail thing, one of the ugliest toenails on the planet. You know, you know what they look like. Well, they fix, uh, they deal with things like that, and calluses and corns, and just great. Foot care. I uh, I go there myself. So that's that's really um, the genesis of their business. But they've expanded to do so many things now. They're on Vine Street, by the way, um, just between Scott and Carlton. And right now there's still a laundromat sign there. But uh, they're they're so new with the uh, Equal Wellness Services branding that they haven't uh, got their new signage up yet. But they they will very very shortly. Uh, but there's free parking, easy access from the QE and the uh, 406, and uh, so many things. I'm just look, looking at the services here. Nursing uh, foot care, skin assessment, osteopathy, compression wear, and many other services. So check them out. And uh, thank you, Audrey, and uh, your whole group at uh, Equal Wellness Services for being a sponsor of this program. Here's the, sh- here's the story we were... I'm going to try to get to, but we uh, spent too much time on the other stories, understandably so, until Paolo joined us. But this is what we wanted to talk about. Uh, our third strange vehicular related story of the week, uh, a, a car. It was a car, wasn't it? Or was it a truck? It was a SUV, a gray SUV, as okay, we'll see in some of the photos. A car, a car truck. <laughs> uh, slammed into and broke through the wall of a store at the Seaway Mall in Welland. How this happens, we don't know. But nevertheless, it and, uh, made, uh, made a fair dent, as you can see, going through the wall 
of that store. Yeah, and just like the bus story this morning, we're not really sure. It seems that this car also may have careened off of another car, uh, according to some of the comments. Uh, okay. Um, 375 of them. The okay. Kool-Aid Glad the seniors are okay. Yeah. God, they never got hit. And then, and then, and then. Hope all involved are okay. Yeah, for sure. So glad no one was hurt. Uh, Apparently, on the other side in the heart store, that was right in the toy section in the yeah. toy department. Okay. And what I'm time of day? What time? I, I forget. What time of day? It looks like it was dusk. Maybe five, six o'clock. So was the store open? Yeah. The store was operating and open when a vehicle came through the wall. I mean, here's Emily says, hi. I work in, in the, the store. store. And was there tonight. I'm very, very glad to hear that the couple in the other vehicle. Other vehicle? What other vehicle? Yeah, and as you see, I, I put some comments in here. I wanted to see if we can get anybody on the show to just elaborate, because, like I said, we still have some yeah. questions. Yeah. But she said other... Was there, there, more, was there more than one vehicle? That's yeah. the one. That's a pretty high-end SUV, is it not? Is that, is that a Beamer? Yeah, it looks like a Beamer. Yeah. It's my guess. So this is a, a BMW X something or other, X5 or something like that. Smashes into a wall. One again has to wonder what was happening with the operator of the vehicle behind no. behind the wheel. This is not something you just one of one of two things happens. You're you're going for one pedal and you hit the other pedal, and then then you lose control of your trajectory. All right, that's something that can happen, or there's a medical issue and somebody loses control of the vehicle because of that. Could so. also be like we saw there at the Rainbow Bridge, like sudden acceleration. Maybe the pedal yeah. gets stuck. I had a car with, with a sticky pedal, and I found myself in that situation once. Oh, yeah. Well, it started revving out of control. But back in, the, back in the old days, though, Kevin, when you and I had those cars, I had one too. The technology was very, very different. The accelerator technology was super different than it is in these vehicles. I had uh, I had a car that had that problem as well, and uh, when I found out what what the deal was, it it was such a low end technology for such an important piece of equipment. There was just one spring about that long that connected from the accelerator pedal that kept it on the on that spring kept the play in the accelerator pedal, and it was attached to of all things the manifold of the car. What happens to the manifold of a vehicle when you're running, in case you don't know, is the fact that it gets really, really hot, right? So if a piece of metal that the hook on it like that gets really, really hot for a really, really long period of time, guess what happens? It breaks. Then there's no spring left in the spring in it, and your, uh, your gas pedal goes to the floor. Well, I don't believe that that is the kind of technology we're dealing with today. Uh, because things have uh, have progressed a lot farther than that, but uh, who knows? I I don't think I don't think that's what happened in this case. With that kind of vehicle, I don't think so. It just yeah, but that's just me. That's a that's a guess. Now here's something, the, and I don't know if it's telling or not, and it's it's from the comment, and we're trying to find the comment, but I remember reading it that said that um, it was a, a lone male driver. And okay. after he exited the vehicle, after he crashed through the wall, he exited the vehicle okay. and fired up a smoke. Is that something or is that nothing? Because people commented and said, I remember when I got in an accident, I must, have, I, I must have smoked a pack of cigarettes in half an hour. Well, people that are smokers, that's the, that's, that's the go-to stress relief, right? So, I don't know. But, but they were talking, but it said it was a lone driver? A, a, a lone occupant? Yeah, a lone male driver. So that other okay, reference. Okay, then what are the, the other comments about? I hope it's the older couple or the older. I think it sideswiped okay. another vehicle. So there, yeah, there had to have been more than one vehicle involved here. Because though though those two scenarios don't add up. Yeah, I remember again. There's 300 comments, so it's tough to sort through them all. But it seems as though it maybe careened off another vehicle in the parking lot. Uh, it sounds like that. Sounds like sounds like there was something going on. And I think we found uh, a photo here of the uh, driver. <laughs> ah, Mr. Kool-Aid. 
right. I mean, come on, I gotta laugh at that stuff, especially when nobody was hurt, right? But yeah. That's freaky to know that it crashed into the toy department because as soon as you think that, you think children and, and young families. Yeah, of course. Sir, you can't park here. So that and of too. course, people getting into the comments about how poorly built the the wall is because, of course, you know they're engineers and inspectors. <laughs> Door yeah. crasher sale. You're gonna get there. You can't oh, park yeah. there, bro. Yeah. All right. Okay, here you go. I was there. The guy who drove in was actually totally fine. He walked right out and smoked a cigarette. The car drove right into the toy section of the store. I didn't see the couple in the white car, but an ambulance did attend to them first, and the lady that was in it was very frantic and crying. I have no clue if she was hurt, and after that I left. Well, that's a terrible trauma that someone has to go through. The man mentioned the pedal getting... well. Okay, Kevin, I, uh, I, I retract what I said. The man mentioned the pedal getting locked after hitting the older couple. Also, the older couple's car didn't look that bad, but I was right next to the mall and the couple was a ways back, so I don't know their physical condition. So, a pedal, maybe, could it have been a floor mat? Maybe, because that happens sometimes in this weather as well with people that have floor mats in their cars it might not be mechanical it might just be something functional in, or malfunctional inside the the vehicle it um uh, yeah, yeah, it is i was in really bad accident first thing i did when i got out of the car was smoke i smoked a whole pack within an hour i was in so much shock yeah that happened um some crazy and interesting things of a vehicular nature this week, Kevin. Just and the bus ride this morning still. I we we still have to somehow follow up on on that and complete this story. I, th I think it'll be a wild bus ride part de the next time we get together because this is this is just too weird uh, and potentially dangerous a story to ignore. There had to be something going on. Yeah. Then there was also this one, Lee, from the dash cam of a semi with a guy making a dangerous pass. And in the comments, um, a lot of professional truck drivers in there saying this happens to us all the time. All the time. And these are the people that cause carnage on our roads. Here comes a vehicle, gonna come on your left-hand side, left-hand lane, he's passing the truck, and oh yeah, baby, that's tight. Now you can see this is York Road, Niagara on the Lake, and it looks like probably the uh, the outlet mall just across the other side, yeah. just to give you an idea of where we're talking. Now, about. people in a hurry, going nowhere. Follow the rules of the road. And that looked like a solid line. Does that not look like a solid line to you? Uh, not here, not right where they're making the pass, but you can see that there's not another... Not right where they're making the pass, but by the time they pull in, there is. Absolutely, and there's keep another watching, vehicle. Keep watching. Right there. Yep. Now is a solid line. I guess he got in just before the solid line, but the point is, uh, it's too much of a chance to take. Well, also, look, where is he getting? Or is she getting? And, and he, how... You could, you could see that there's another car up the road from the truck that yes. it's got to slow down yes. for. And you're going nowhere. You just... You passed one you're, vehicle you're to get behind up, another yeah, one. You're coming up to the, to the Glendale cutoff there, I think, right? Yeah. And there's, and there's a corner. There's stoplights and traffic lights and that's where that diamond exchange takes place you're not going anywhere through there at 80 kilometers or 100 kilometers an hour and they're probably speeding to begin with idiot you can see right there it is two days ago two days ago seven o'clock there's a little time stamp down at the bottom left yeah and the and 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 you know the truck driver who's got the dash cam on there is going as you say i see it every day just because somebody doesn't want to be traveling behind a truck at the speed limit. You don't want to go, heaven forbid you travel the speed limit. Uh, and I feel bad for truck drivers. I mean, Lee, have you ever um, either driven a truck or towed a vehicle mm -hmm. or anything like that? Yeah. You know that your comfort is that gap that you leave between you and the car in front of you. And yeah. then us motorists always squeeze in there because we see an opportunity. Yeah. As, a, as, a, as opposed to... Uh, a safe distance between these vehicles and the thing with uh, truck drivers I know I've never driven the big rigs but uh, I know a number of people that have had careers that do that and the thing when you're up in one of those 
vehicles, is you can see what's happening on the road miles ahead. You can see the traffic um, happening, you can see things developing, and you kind of know when there's going to be a problem. A lot of these drivers will tell you, I can, you can see it coming. And oftentimes these tractor trailers that are involved in, the, in these accidents, they don't have a, a lot of them don't have a choice. Yes, do they make some mistakes? Yeah, sure. But um, in most cases, somebody else is causing the problem. Case in point, that massive tanker spill that happened on the Queen Elizabeth Highway in uh, Beamsville area of uh, last week or the week before, that was, uh, that was a truck rollover that ended up closing that highway for a long period of time for cleanup, et cetera, and it had nothing to do with the driver of the truck or any fault of, of that operator. It was the other people, those other people, us, us other people in cars that caused these things going on. It's, uh, Lee's uh, super excited. We've got Jasmine Jasutavicious. Oh, she's sitting about, there? No, she's coming up in about five minutes. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, did she steal the show there at UFC 297 in Toronto. What a story. What a story. Now, we, uh, now we, hold off on that, Lee. I'm not going to tell the whole story. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to tell the story. I'm, no. Okay. No, I'm a professional. I tease these things. Now, anyway, uh, Jazz, of course, just to get a little background. Uh, Jazz, of course, is a uh, very, very uh, accomplished mixed martial arts fighter. She is from St. Catharines and we have been tracking her career for what, two, three years now here on Niagara 411 Live. And uh, that's her in a righteous, I just won this thing strut <laughs> around, the, around the ring. Uh, but there's a lot, there's a lot more to this story than just another fight and just another win, which it was for Jazz. Um, so we're going to be we're going to be digging into that a little bit deeper when she joins us in a few minutes. Incredible. Um, I want to send a big thank you uh, to the EMS palliative team. We had a call this morning. We needed help. They came immediately, listened to what is happening, and made the calls to get the ball rolling for help and support my dad. And, and we needed. Uh, they treated us and the situation with respect and dignity. They were friendly and took the time to get the job done. Uh, they went far above and beyond by cleaning off the cars, shoveled and salted. These two ladies were amazing. When I find uh, to, uh, sorry, some of the sentences don't make sense. Well, um, I will post on the appropriate, when I find where, oh, I oh, see. okay, where to post this, It was yeah. a, just a misspelling, okay. When it's I just find nice. so, so often there's so many, like, negative stories about health care and oh, health yeah. delivery and everything. Yeah, of course. Uh, I waited this long and so on, so it's nice when yeah. people say, hey, When I find where good. to post this, I'll post on the appropriate site, but sending our uh, gratitude. And uh, it's always nice when people take the time to congratulate and thank people that uh, don't get a lot of the thanks at least in, in public. They get a lot of thanks in private because, my gosh, some of the uh, PSWs and the EMS people do amazing work for, uh, for those people in our society that need it. And there are more and more and more of us that need it as time goes by. So there you go. Again, I uh, want to thank our sponsors of the program here today, our premier sponsor of Gales Gas Bars Limited, locally owned and operated for three generations and they still do great, great work to support our community here around Niagara. Born and bred here in Niagara. Also Verge Insurance Group, thank you very much. Home, auto, personal insurance, whatever it is that you need, home insurance. Um, Call them, and they'll make sure that they get in touch with the people that can help you get what you need at the price you can afford when it comes to your insurance coverage. And again, a Niagara Company has all of our sponsors. Our ace alignment for all of your automotive needs on North Street in St. Catharines. We thank them for continuing to sponsor us from 23 on into 2024. So check them out. They're on North Street, and um, good guys. They'll just 
I stopped by and actually I had a thing I was going on with my car and I thought I wasn't quite sure what it was. Stopped in, uh, asked a question, didn't charge me any money, said, I think it's probably this. I don't think we can help you because I don't think it's uh, that. I think try that. And they were right and off I went. So God bless them. Thank you. Um, and also our newest sponsor, Equal Wellness Services. Um, call today for all kinds of uh, information on uh, foot care is where this Equal Wellness Services began. But they have uh, so much uh, to offer now and they've expanded. There's a machine in particular, I want to mention this quickly, it's called a Seascope. Uh, and one of the very, very few, if not the only place in Niagara where you can take advantage of this, it's a skincare related high definition camera. It takes about five subdermal photos. A subdermal mean like underneath the surface of your of your skin. Say you've got a mole or something you want to find out more about. Well the photos are then uploaded uh, and the emails come back in within about three days. As Kevin was talking about before, we hear so much about wait times for tests and specialists and healthcare results and things like that. Well no such wait times involved here. So there's, uh, it's kind of a Kind of a cool uh, service that is now um, offered here at Equal Wellness Services. It's on Vine Street in a strip plaza just between uh, Scott and Carlton Street in St. Cal. And uh, so we thank them for joining us. This is the second episode of uh, sponsorship for Equal, and we thank Audrey Wall and her gang for uh, for supporting the program. Kevin, what's going on with uh, with your guys, we have we have been remiss in asking you about uh, WeStream um, again. You were at Niagara Falls City Council last night, that I know. Yeah, long one last night as they passed their 2024 operating yeah. budget. So much was debated, and after five hours and 20 minutes, I think they put forward a um, 3.95 3.95 um, levy increase. Okay. Which I think amounts to about a hundred bucks for the average homeowner yeah. on an annual basis. So, um, so did that last night. I'm trying to pull up here, Lee. On Sunday, we were streaming from the Gale Center for mm -hmm. the um, the 2023 Sports Wall of Fame induction ceremony. Oh yes. And it was great to see you there. We had an entire uh, Brock University soccer team inducted, cool. of which I think from nice. 2002 they won the uh, the Canadian Championship. And I think seven of the members. We're from Niagara Falls. Uh, we had some soccer players. We had some con some contributors, some builders, and things like that. So, absolutely packed house. And let's see if I can. Uh, if you I may have pull something up. Well, Kevin's doing that. Uh, you may have seen along the the crawl along the bottom of our broadcast there the fact that we were we had scheduled uh, Dave McMahon, dog trainer extraordinaire, for uh, for a chat today but he is in transit he's on the road so it's uh, sometimes a little bit difficult as you can imagine to um, communicate through this forum when you're traveling but uh, the reason we were going to have uh, Dave McMahon of uh, McMahon's Dog Training Academy located in Niagara Falls on the program is because of a story that we touched on last week with regard to uh, an aggressive dog story at, uh, at the dog park which is a section of uh, Fireman's Park in, in Niagara Falls. And uh, I know that uh, Dave has very, very specific views, being a dog expert, has very specific views on, uh, on off-leash parks for dogs. And I wanted to chat with uh, Dave at that. But uh, obviously uh, not easy to do today with him being in transit. I just wanted to let you know what was going on there. Yeah, and Lee, we're just waiting on Jazz as well. She confirmed with us yesterday for 1 o'clock today, but as you know, she's training. She's got a lot of media demands, so hopefully oh, yeah. she's just gone long with her previous interview and is, is going to squeeze us in here in a couple of minutes. Um, we do have some footage from her fight, and I want to get to that. I mean, if we don't grab Jazz, at least we can look at the, uh, the ass whooping that she handed down <laughs> on Saturday. But uh, if you want to see here, so here is some footage from the Sports Wall of Fame induction ceremony on during a time on as Sunday, the UB Bull in the top goal, Andrea, Andrea Sports Wall of Fame recipient. Yeah, as you can see, packed house. Yeah. Sorry. And this girl, oh my gosh, what a resume. Landed a soccer scholarship. Oh, yes. Was like, you know, Big Ten Athlete of the Year, what have you. 
um, and then earn a bachelor's and a PhD. This is such wow. an honor for me. I want to thank the committee for including me Andrea in this year's Andrea Sherry. It's humbling to be a part of this group and the great athletes that were inducted before us. So it's very cool to be there, uh, and it's always nice as we stream to know that um, her friends and family that couldn't be there in person were able to share along in the moment live, and then also write the archive of it is and Andrea really gets to go back and look at her own induction ceremony yeah. and her kids will as well. And that's the cool part about what uh, what WeStream does, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is especially for events that not everybody can come and see and be a part of but wants to maybe see and be a part of is uh, it's there for all time. Uh, professionally done, uh, easy peasy to watch. Everything is done for you, and all you have to do is click on just uh, everything's on YouTube forever and ever. Just uh, go to YouTube, um, search WeStream, and everything's there, right, Kev? Yeah, absolutely. And this one lives on the City of Niagara Falls website, so not everything lives on our YouTube channels, but if you go to all of our partners that we work with, you can find all this stuff. But of course, you know, you just Google. City of Niagara Falls, you can find Sports it. Wall of Fame. Now, yeah. I have a funny feeling that in about 15 or 20 years, um, we're going to be live streaming an induction ceremony for our next guest. And she's ready? Jasmine Jasadavicious. Uh, how are you today, kiddo? I'm well. How are you? I am, uh, I am fine. Uh, blown away by your weekend. Wow, you've, you've had quite a story to tell, haven't you? Yeah, it was a wild, wild weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you are, you're, I know what your record is right now. Your pro record is like uh, 10 and 3. Your UFC uh, record is now 4 and 2 after Saturday's uh, fight. But Saturday was more than just, um, just another, just another fight for you. This story started back on Thursday when you got a bit of a surprise, right? Yes. Tell us yeah, about so tell us about that. It was Thursday, right before the the day before weigh in. So I normally fight at 125 pounds. We signed a contract and agreed to both fight at 125 pounds. Um, so I got a call from the matchmaker on the afternoon before weigh in, and right when you see the matchmaker call the day before weigh in, you're not happy. You're like. Ugh. So that sinking feeling. He calls and says, hey, Priscilla, she's not going to be able to make weight. Um, kind of like, what's the plan now? Because I could turn down the fight. I, there's so many options at this point. Right. And, um, and so I said, okay, my team's just going for lunch. They're, can you talk to them? And they, like, I trust them with everything. Um, so what they go to lunch and i just like lay down try to pretend this isn't all going on <laughs> there's like back and forth all afternoon trying to figure out what weight we're gonna finally fight at because we we wanted 130 and then she couldn't do that then 132 and so it got to the point that there's so much back and forth they're like okay we're just gonna make it 135 we know for sure she's gonna make the weight it will just be up a weight class and like let's just go let's get to the scale let's get this night kind of happening so i was wow. already you know re ready for the adversity <laughs> so what is this uh, what does this really mean uh, other than the other than technical what what is the potential downside of uh, you weigh in at uh, what did you say it was going to be a one 120 weight class 125 125 all right so what is the difference to you as a fighter potentially to have to all of a sudden bump up a weight class? Well, the the whole time leading up in camp, I've been like dieting and like making sure that by fight night, then I would be 125 pounds. That's, that's part of like, I don't walk around at 125 pounds. So there is a process of like getting your weight down to compete at that weight. And so, if I knew I was fighting at 135 pounds, then I would have just kept the weight on and then be able to train through camp comfortably and not be dieting, not have to sacrifice. But we, uh, we, you know, we agreed upon this weight. That's our normal weight classes. And uh, she must have had a problem making weight. So 
you know, the whole back and forth. So you know, so she was quite a bit bigger than me going into the fight. Well, night. this is kind of this is kind of where I was going with this as well is the fact that if somebody's carrying an extra ten pounds or eight pounds or whatever it was, um, theoretically there is a bit of. Uh, and I say theoretically, a bit of an advantage there, correct? The, exactly. There's there's weight classes for a reason, and um, and yeah, she's a power puncher, and her having that ever extra ten pounds behind each punch is is significant. Or if she's trying to grapple, like having ten pounds on somebody, ten pounds. You have to remember, it's ten pounds of muscle. It's yeah. not just like ten pounds. It's it's real. That it's. More like 15, 20 pounds. It's real weight, yeah, for a fighter. So, was there was there a little bit of uh, angst on on the side of your team like this? I mean, this this girl knew that she was going to be fighting in this weight class. She knew that she was going to be fighting you. It didn't come up like two weeks ago. She's w was probably supposedly preparing this fight uh, for this fight for quite some time. Yeah, we signed the fight like. I think eight weeks or ten weeks prior, so there was plenty of time. So you must have been pretty pissed. Oh, I was very, very <laughs> angry because it was over Christmas. I didn't get to enjoy all the celebrations with my family. I didn't get to enjoy any of the food. Like I almost had to skip over Christmas this year. So I was already fueled going into uh, a fight week. Okay, so so now you're now now you've decided to go forward. You go into weigh-in day, uh, which is Friday, and you weighed in at, I'm assuming, 125, 124, whatever. Um, she weighs in at... I, what? She she was 133.8. Yeah. Uh, like, when we weighed in. I don't... I think on fight night, she was, like, 148, I think they said. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you weighed in at what? I weighed it while I was like drinking water on the scale, trying to get up to 135 pounds. I weighed in, I think, 133, but on fight night, going into the fight, I was only 136. All right. So now, um, flash forward to the real deal, and we're in Toronto, 297, and you abs. You know, say what you want about uh, about you know violence in sport or whatever, but I mean it's a it's it's a, mixed martial arts is a is a violent pastime. But you actually cleaned the clock, cl cleaned the floor with this girl. You were outstanding. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know how else to say it. I got. No, thank you. I um, my my coach told me like don't admire any of your shots. Watch the fight after. Like, just go in there and win. Do do whatever work you need to do to to be victorious in this fight and watch watch it after. And so I would like continually think that when I was when I was like going against her. Like, okay, just keep working, keep chipping away. Eventually, something will come. She'll either give up her back and I can get the choke finally. Or the ref will stop it. It'll see too much. Like some something will have to come. Well, it sure did. And um, now the uh, now one of the one, one of the other uh, amazing things is I think you set some sort of a record. Connect me if I'm want uh, on the strike counts. Explain yes. uh, explain I, what that is. So I I was fortunate to set. Uh, like multiple records for this fight in particular, but one um, one record was the biggest strike differential. So she landed 26 strikes in total the fight, and I landed like 326. So I had 300 <laughs> more strikes than her that fight. My goodness! So I guess the I guess one of the obvious questions would be. Did all of this controversy leading up to Saturday's card fuel you to ha have this kind of performance? Did it motivate you? It, it must have. Like there, there's no way that all of that adversity, I, I wasn't going to turn that into like something to charge me. I, I, I'm not going to 
you know, it's a negative situation that I have to deal with, but it's my choice how I deal with it. And instead of, you know, letting it drain me, I'm going to take it as motivation and, and use that moving forward. Now, what kind of uh, the UFC organization, Dana White and the UFC folks must have been incredibly impressed by this performance and by the by the by the talent that you that you exhibited what kind of feedback have you received since saturday i i've had so many people reach out and just like congratulate me on the fight it was really cool after um the fight i came back and then somebody came over and was like oh dana white wants to see you and i've never met him like at contender series he like you say he says congratulations to you and i see him there but other than that it's like i don't see him i don't ever like really know him or anything like that and so i got to go in the back and he had like a, a room with all his friends they were watching the fight and they had like nice food and charcuterie board and all that and he came <laughs> out and just like congratulated me on the fight it was like a really really cool experience wow uh well Congratulations on that. Now I have to, I have to ask you, and who knows? Maybe, maybe you don't care, and that's okay too. But um, it, it looked, uh, it looked like you did a fair bit of damage to this, to your opponent on Saturday. Uh, is she okay? I hope so. I, um, <laughs> you know, I feel like still now even though it's been a couple of days i feel like almost like emotionally exhausted physically as well but like you know i i hate that there's a winner and a loser in this sport and i've i've been on the other side not of a beating like that but i've been on the other side of a loss and i've been on the other side of like a tough fight where i have received some damage and like you know i i really i i hate that the for me to feel like this, she has to feel the way that she does. Mm. And uh, but I understand that's an unfortunate byproduct of of the fight it's, game. Well, it's it's and, the nature uh, of the beast, is yeah. it not? Well, especially when you've got yeah. yeah. I mean, when you've got a different a strike differential of three twenty six to twenty six or whatever the heck that crazy number is, um, she's she's got to be feeling something, but. It, again, that's what you get into this for. That's the, you know that you know the risks and rewards when you step into the ring. So it, it is what it is in in the world that you've chosen to live in. Okay, so and as you mentioned to your mom when we talked about this before, when it comes to getting bruised and cut and damaged and hurt, etc. Uh, I remember I'll never forget a quote that you uh, mentioned on this program is. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I get bruised, but I heal fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm a quick healer. Yeah. <laughs> See, this, this was from the fight. It's almost gone. Yeah. <laughs> well, you look great. Um, I want to ask... Go ahead, Kevin. Turn myself up here. Um, I want to ask Jazz. I mean, I've seen descriptions of this fight as one of the top five UFC fights yes. ever, one of the most brutal fights in UFC history. Um, what did, First of all, did you, did you win any fight bonuses? Or because you were a prelim? Yes, I did. I did win a fight bonus. He gave vote two. I think I got performance of the night. Wow. I did get two. She, that other girl got one as well. But yeah, and what does that do for, what does that do for you? Bonus. What does that do that for you? changes my life. You know what I mean? That's another, uh, uh, like, uh, another sign that I'm doing the right things within the sport. And, I, you know, if I just continue on the process that I'm doing, train hard, train as if I lost that fight and, you know, keep going back in there. Don't get too high on the highs or too low on the lows. Yeah, so Jazz, um, you know, with all the attention from Saturday night and that brutal victory was just awesome, does it feel like um, like, like you just burst onto the UFC scene now? Like, are you getting attention from all corners yeah. of the world? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, I went to the grocery store yesterday, a girl <laughs> recognized me, so that was cool. <laughs> Are you are you here in St. Catharines now? Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome that you're being recognized. So so cool, Jazz. Very happy for you. Indeed. Uh, okay. Uh, this is how we always end one of these chats. Other than what you said is continue to train 
like you lost the last fight, don't take, don't get too high, don't get too low, et cetera. So you, the training continues. And in, in your world, the next fight is not yet set. That comes with time. How is that process going to go now? Will you be more in demand after this past Saturday? How is that going to work? Um, I'm not too sure. So I, I always tell my, my coaches and my team, give me a week. Don't talk to me about any fights for, for a week. Let me let me just rest. Good idea. Um, so I know that they're chattering. I, I can hear them back and forth. I can hear names and everything. But, um, but yeah, I trust them wholeheartedly. So we'll see. I'm sure on Monday morning they're going to be like, okay, Jazz, this is what we're thinking. <laughs> Here's what's the, is, there, is there somebody um, that you'd like to meet? You must have you must have I mean, a list. I just, there, you know, there's there's multiple girls. Like I, I just got ranked. Um, I think I was put at number fifteen now. So I'll take anyone who's ranked above me. Ideally, um, I would. Uh, there's, you know, we'll we'll see. I don't know yet. We'll see who yeah. I'll get matched up. But I well, want to keep climbing the ranks until I get that belt. Jazz, what about the uh, the weight class? Like you moved up a class. Is there any talk in your camp about staying at that class? And does it look like there's a like a straighter path? to a UFC title shot, a weight class up, or are you moving back down? I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to move back down. I think I'm like a little bit undersized for 35. That being said, I, like, you know, for the right matchup, I would, I would do it for sure. Or, you know, if it's a short notice thing, then I would definitely be open to that. And I'm, I'm happy that, you know, this kind of, it gives me more options like that for the future. Well, uh, now, 125, that's the uh, flyweight, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and then you were fighting, what, Bantam against this Bantam girl? Bantam weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, uh, just... It's it's funny, too. I've, I have fought at the weight class even lower, 115 pounds. So I've fought at all three weight classes now. 15, wow. 25, 35. Well, just, just from what I've seen, uh, now I know you said in this fight you were like weighed in a 136 or whatever, but a lot of that, as you mentioned, is probably water weight or whatever. But, uh, but you, look, you look great in there. You really, really did. You looked in top form, and I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, you look good. It really did. Thank Congra you. Congratulations. Thank uh, you very much. Nice to have you back home for a while. Yeah, it's nice to be back home. You know, I came, it, it got the uh, the cold. It seems like it's colder in Toronto than St. Catharines, so I'm glad that I'm in St. Catharines back. Yeah, well, Toronto Toronto's uh, had a bit of a tougher winter than we have so far this year, but that's not unusual considering where we lived, like tucked underneath uh, Lake Ontario. And, uh, well, you're home where you belong. That's awesome. <laughs> Exactly. That's what I was telling everyone there. I'm like, you guys come down the highway an hour. It's a lot warmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jasmine, uh, Jazz the Vicious. Uh, um, I love to call you Jazz the Vicious because, uh, boy, that's kind of what you are. Uh, but also a wonderful person. I mean, you don't just walk around and beat people up for fun. Uh, but it's a great living, and uh, God yeah, how bless is, you. How is this sweet girl, that same girl I saw, tearing the face off of that other girl on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> Do you sometimes feel like two different people? Yeah, I I do. I feel like on on fight week, it's like there's a transition that kind of like happens, and. Yeah. It's, it's weird because after the fight, I feel like you almost like transition back because like you almost have to turn off emotion on fight week because you can't like see see them as a person. And so it's like you just got to, you know, shut that down a bit. Uh, and it must be must be difficult to do that. And that's part and parcel of the training, I suppose, too. just focus on the goal. Yeah, it's all encompassing. It's all part of it. Amazing. Uh, well, you know we'll keep in touch with you. You keep in touch with us, and uh, only brighter stars uh, ahead 
for you. That was what an amazing story this last fight is. If you've got nothing else to tell your grandkids, this weekend was one of them. That's for sure. Yeah, it was a wild, yeah. wild night. Yeah. Grandma, was that you? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, Jess, uh, you enjoy the rest of your downtime, and uh, whatever happens next, you know we'll be there. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Always great chatting with you. Thank you very much for having me. Take care, kiddo. Yeah. Uh, all right. Wow. What a story. What a story. And so, so good at what she does. And again, I, I've said this before, I'm not really uh, personally a fan of uh, training people to hurt other people. It's not, it's not something that I think about as a, as a great lifelong pursuit, but as we were just talking about, if you're going to do it, if you're going to be in that world, and it's a very big and popular world, you might as well do it well. And she sure does. And uh, good for her. Kevin, uh, we want to thank our, uh, our participants. Uh, in the program today. We're going to have uh, Putty, uh, a band with uh, some Niagara roots as well as Montreal roots and Timmins roots and uh, the fellow we chatted with, Paolo, uh, runs a, an, um, an animation and production studio out of St. David's, out of his playing, uh, home in St. David's in, uh, in Niagara. And their band formed in 1993. That's uh, 30 years ago plus. And so after some downtime, they have reformed. They're playing again. They just played uh, in Niagara at uh, Camp Cataract not too long ago. Had a show in Toronto. They've got um, just about an entire new album that is done there. He, uh, Paolo is saying they're about two, three songs short of a, of a full album right now. Uh, but uh, their newest video uh, is going to be the one that plays us off the stage. And we're going to do that... Uh, we're going to do that right now. It's called What Do You Want? This is Paddy. Kevin, uh, as always, from WeStream, a pleasure to work with you. This has been Episode 3 of Season 5, Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. Have yourselves a f fabulous week and weekend. Cheers. Here's Paddy. Putty. <laughs>